from that far away, just seeing that thing creep around is frightening enough, but then you kind of realize, wait a minute, that's like 10, 12 feet in the air. That's terrifying. My recent Netflix picks have been all over the place. Terrifier, Creep, American Horror Story, 1922, 13 Cameras, The Bye Bye Man, The Conjuring. Now every one of these surprised me in its own way, whether good or bad, but somehow in the midst of all this, I just kind of forgot about one movie that I watched before all of these. <laughs> have a reason that I haven't talked about this one yet. I think it just kind of fell by the wayside when we got sucked up into watching so many other things. So now it feels like as good a time as any to get to this movie. So The Ritual is a 2017 British horror movie based on a book of the same name written by Adam Neville. Now if the film differs from the book, I have no idea. I've never read it. I'm only going off of the film here. So our plot centers around five friends who went to college together. Hutch, Phil, Luke, Rob, and Dom. Now, sometime later, they've all met up and reconnected with one another at a pub and over drinks discussed different ideas and plans for some kind of group trip. Hiking? Yeah. Hiking. That's a good chat. That's a good chat. Oh, come on, man. Let's do something good. Now, after leaving the bar that night, three of the friends retire for the night while Luke and Rob head to a convenience store to purchase more alcohol. Now, unfortunately for them, their timing could not be worse, and in their little drunken, friendly bickering back and forth, they fail to notice that the store is being robbed. Successful businessman with a beautiful wife and children. Yeah, nice. And... Don't fucking you, you cunt! When the two crooks burst out of the back room, they only see Rob as Luke manages to hide behind an end cap before he could be spotted. Now, Rob gives in to the robber's demands, that is, until one of them demands he give up his wedding ring. Now, Luke overhears all of this, and he's behind that end cap, picks up a little bottle of vodka, kind of brandishing it as a weapon. And the ring. But petrified in fear, he's too slow to act, if he was ever going to. And the robber's impatience with Rob not wanting to let go of it lead to him being bludgeoned to death right before Luke's eyes. Now we find out what we just witnessed, though true, is a recurring nightmare that Luke suffers from his guilt at not helping his friend. It's now six months later and the remaining four friends are hiking together along King's Trail in northern Sweden. This was Rob's idea, the one he had back at the pub when they were trying to figure out something for the group to do and everybody shot him down, so this is their way of honoring his memory. Shall we do this? Trying to move on from his death, it might have went off without a hitch had it not been for Dom who injures his knee. God, this dude just bitches all throughout this movie. I'm not doing 14 hours on this, okay man? Let's get the map. Realizing to continue the trip would be too difficult for him, the group decide to head back to town, but instead of remaining on the trail, they instead cut through the forest, which should take them half the time. This is where the movie really starts to shine. Not even that deep into the forest, the group immediately are put on edge by the strange discovery of a gutted elk hanging far too high for a human to have placed it, as well as strange symbols carved into the trees. Unnerved but deciding to press on, they eventually discover a cabin which provides them shelter from the downpour they've become caught in, but what they find inside might be more dangerous than the rain. Not only are there more of these strange symbols scattered around, but upstairs, Phil locates an effigy of sorts. I'm going downstairs to get that fire started. You guys can stay up here if you want. Yeah, with so little context, it's fucking cool. Deciding to just avoid the upstairs altogether for now, the group sleeps downstairs, but each suffer their own nightmares. This is another great theme of this movie. You know, Luke continues to have his recurring nightmares where he feels guilty about Rob's death, and all throughout the movie, they start mixing it in with the environment. The floor of the store is now overgrown with tree and plant life, but the aisles themselves are right there as they always were, along with Rob's untimely death. If nothing else, it's just visually magnificent, seeing the overgrown floor and all that mixed with the modern convenience store. It's just cool. I can see why they went with this angle on the little Netflix preview box. And the next morning, Luke discovers some odd wounds on his chest, something none of the others have, and Phil is found upstairs naked and praying to the effigy. Phil, Phil, what are you doing? Now, this is enough to make them question their sanity and realize, yeah, we need to get the fuck out of here. So deeper into the woods they go, and eventually up a ridge, aiming to get a better view of where they are and which way they should continue. Now here we get our first tease of what's lurking out in the woods when Luke sees a hand grasping a tree. 
what I loved about this is, think about it, how fucking far up the tree is that hand? So, from that far away, just seeing that thing creep around is frightening enough, but then you kind of realize, wait a minute, that's like 10, 12 feet in the air. That's terrifying. Now, as the tension mounts between the weary group, true feelings start coming out as Dom angrily reveals that he blames Luke for Rob's death. Now he's got some fucking fight in him, yeah? Well, where was that with Rob? This is another great aspect of this film. Not just Luke feeling guilty about his friend's death, but now wondering if all along his other friends have been secretly blaming him for his death too. So after suffering more nightmares that night, Luke, Phil, and Dom awake to find Hutch's tent empty, and hearing his screams from deeper into the woods, they rush to try and find him. And instead, they only find themselves lost in the thicket, and unable to locate their campsite, they trudge on without their supplies and eventually stumble upon Hutch's body hanging from the trees, gutted much like that elk from earlier. Climbing another ridge, they discover just how close they are to the edge of the forest, and also spotting signs of civilization. Before they can even head that direction, Phil is snatched by the creature and pulled into the darkness. <laughs> Now Luke and Dom end up running for their lives. Oh, come on, Dom, you big bad boy, talking all that shit to Luke earlier. Now Phil's in trouble, and what does he do? He fucking runs. Now before stumbling into a small village deep in the woods, they pass by Phil's body, which is now also hanging from the trees. Running into the first house they see, the two collapse in exhaustion on the floor before being knocked unconscious by whoever is inside. Now later, as the two regain consciousness, some old woman enters the room, revealing to Luke that she has similar wounds to his on her chest. The significance of which we don't really know yet, but, you know, it's probably like a mark from the creature or something, right? Either way, Dom, who doesn't have one, is taken away, and another woman comes in, revealing to Luke and us the intentions. They prepare for sacrifice. Dom himself is aware as well when he is returned to the basement, and accepting his fate, he tells Luke, Look, man, I know I'm gonna be sacrificed, but you gotta burn this fucking village to the ground. They're gonna kill me, do you understand? You wanna get out of here? You <laughs> Burn this fucking place to the ground behind you. At least he redeemed himself in the end. Not too long after, Dom is brought out and tied to a post, which lures the creature out, only it's taken the form of his wife at the moment, allowing it an opportunity to get close to him in his confusion. <laughs> oh it, it made short work of him, and it looked fucking awesome in the process. <laughs> Now, while this is going on, Luke's trying to escape from his cuffs. He manages to after heroically breaking his own thumb. Before he can fully escape, however, the woman from earlier shows up and he presses her for information on what this thing really is. Apparently, it's some kind of godlike creature from Scandinavian mythology, and it's like a bastard child of Loki. No, not that ass hat. I mean, technically, yes, but no. We worship it. It keeps us here. Let us live beyond natural life. By sacrificing the living to him, the others retain immortality. She also tells him that he's going to be taking part in this ritual, and if he doesn't, they're going to kill him. What do you do in that situation? Luke manages to break free of his restraints, and heading upstairs, finds the mummified remains, or possibly still living bodies, of the inhabitants of this village, and he sets fucking fire to them! Airplane flying by or something. Loud as hell. The fucking airplane, goddammit. I'm sorry about the airplane. Pretty soon, the entire cabin is ablaze, which gets the Jotun's reaction. I don't even know if I said that shit right. That's why I've been calling it the creature. Pissed off over this, it kills the woman. For some reason or another, Luke fires a shot at the creature. Like, it's gonna do anything other than piss him off. Mad credit to the movie here for not cheaping out on some visual shots at the monster. You get just the right amount. They don't overdo it and they don't underdo it. And even though it's CG and all that, it's perfectly mixed. It's perfectly blended. Something I usually bitch about. They just, too much or not enough. And they found the perfect amount. Now, giving chase, Luke hauls ass through the forest, but is no match for the creature's speed and leg length, and it easily catches him after playing tricks with his mind and making him relive Rob's death yet again. Forcing Luke onto his knees, the creature demands his worship, but Luke isn't having it. Uh -huh. 
Now, using an axe he managed to get his hands on in the chaos, he gives the creature a nice hefty chop, which at the least injures it long enough for him to gain his footing and run towards the edge of the forest, eventually emerging in an open field near a highway. Now either unable or unwilling to leave the forest, the creature just roars at him. And then Luke roars back at the creature. I just love it. I don't really know why. I think what I love about this film is it can be as deep or as surface level as you want it to be. Some people take a deeper meaning route with the wounds, believing that Luke was marked by the creature along with the others because they had suffered some sort of great tragedy and perhaps could be easily molded as a result. Some people just see it as a cool creature film with some obvious mythological aspects to it. No matter how you look at it, it's a pretty damn good film. The cast was solid, the idea was solid, and I like the movie ending with the creature still out there. I don't think a sequel needs to be made. I'm just saying this movie did a great job of leaving a threat out there and also not making you feel like they were cheaping out on you and, and making you get ready to go see a part two or a part three. And sometimes it's okay to just... Evil's out there. That, that's the way the world works. Evil is out there. So it's nice to have a horror movie just kind of say, hey, sometimes this kind of shit happens.